Hi, I'm Max Kaiser. This is the Kaiser Report. We're on the front line of markets and finance. There's a global war going on, savers versus speculators, financial terrorists versus the rest of us. And the front line on this markets and finance extends past just banks. It also includes companies like Monsanto, symbol M-O-N, New York Stock Exchange. Stacey Herbert, tell me more. Yes, Max Kaiser. They are in the first headline, WikiLeaks. U.S. ambassador planned retaliation against France over ban on Monsanto corn. So apparently former ambassador Craig Stapleton was concerned about France's decision to suspend cultivation of Monsanto's MON 810 corn and warned that a new French environmental review standard could spread anti-biotech policy across the EU. He said, quote, country team Paris recommends that we calibrate a target retaliation list that causes some pain across the EU since this is a collective responsibility, but that also focuses in part on the worst culprits. Yeah, I want to uh, point this out to uh, folks that Monsanto and their genetically modified seeds is another form of a fiat currency. It's another form of debt currency that they foist onto a population. They then become indebted, in this case agriculturally indebted, but the currency itself is a form of a currency. And I reach out to my brothers in India because you're letting Monsanto into your country for really no good reason. They're there. They're doing all kinds of mischief there. And it's a form of fiat currency and control and debt control, Indians. You should be aware of this. Well, there's a few things here to look at because, first of all, he threatened retaliation. They, the State Department was looking at retaliation. What was that retaliation? And is the financial crisis across Europe, for example, part of that retaliation? The other thing is that WikiLeaks is the one that released this information. If it weren't for WikiLeaks, we would not know that the U.S. State Department sought to punish France and the French people, by the way. The French people are the ones that are forcing their government to adopt these policies against genetically modified seeds. So punishing these people, we would not have known if it weren't for WikiLeaks releasing this information. And in fact, we would not have known if it were not for a few alternative media outlets no mainstream media and you can look here at this little image here i tried to i looked up on washington post not one single result for wikileaks monsanto revelations none well yeah okay just to review here Wik wikileaks and retaliation so the u.s is is threatening retaliation so u.s on behalf of an american corporation is threatening retaliation against france and other countries not to let in a corrupt genetically modified debt currency from Monsanto into their country. And then WikiLeaks, which, you know, I don't understand this. And the people in the U.S. are in the alternative media space uh, are trying to disparage WikiLeaks. They should be celebrating WikiLeaks because WikiLeaks is now the only entity that has taken on the corruption of mainstream media and the corruption of a Monsanto who's in business to enslave and to undermine economic and even uh, health, but even uh, any kind of real health. Because, of course, these seeds have been shown to be extraordinarily dangerous, these Monsanto killer seeds. Yes. Well, in fact, some of the health risk, according to Democracy Now!, who they had on a guest, uh, Jeffrey Smith, who said... By the third generation, most GM soy fed hamsters lost the ability to have babies. Yeah. <laughs> That's a huge risk. And we don't know because there's never been studies on the genetically modified health risk to humans. There's never been human studies right. on this material that is just released into the U.S. population by who? In 1992, a guy named Michael Taylor, the former lawyer for Monsanto. <laughs> so it's health risk and economic risk. And let me just emphasize, putting the health risk aside for a second, because, of course, Monsanto will hire the same lawyers to argue that these are healthy, that the oil industry hires the same front groups, the same scumbags. They'll come in there and defend Monsanto and they'll defend Exxon. But economically, it makes no sense. If you're an Indian and you have uh, a killer Terminator seeds that don't reproduce on their own, you have to buy them from Monsanto every single year. You're committing economic suicide, Indians. We get emails every day from India saying, when are you going to cover India? Here's the big Indian story, India. You're being slapped in the face with genetically modified seeds and you jackasses don't accept them.
Well, here are some of the other health risks involved. Yeah. Rodents fed GM corn, as the French had rejected this GM corn. Well, in rodents, it caused um, immune system responses and signs of toxicity. And studies showed organ lesions, altered liver and pancreas cells, changed enzyme levels, etc. Now, the, the other part of this is the moral hazard, because Americans accepted it in 1992 when Michael Taylor was the head of the FDA. He approved it without any oversight, no studies, no nothing. He is a former Monsanto lawyer. Well, look at this little clip here from Democracy Now! with Jeffrey Smith when he's saying, well, is the Obama administration any better, he's asked. Unfortunately, we were hoping for a lot more success. Um, President Obama, while he was campaigning here in Iowa, promised that he would require labeling of genetically modified crops. And since most Americans say they would avoid GMOs if labeled, that would have eliminated it from the food supply. But you see, he and the FDA have been promoting biotechnology. And unfortunately, the Obama administration has not been better than the Bush administration, possibly worse. And Max, why is he worse than Bush? Well, apparently, that same former um, Monsanto lawyer, Michael Taylor, he's now the U.S. food safety czar. I'm so ashamed. As an American, I can tell you, I wake up hanging my head in shame <laughs> at that sleazebag Hillary Clinton. She goes around the world representing America. She goes to India, and she pushes this seed crack, this dangerous health risk, economic risk, Monsanto seed to these poor Indians for one thing. I mean, forget about Americans. I mean, they'll put anything you put in front of their face. I mean, they, they you know, they're gone already. That's, they, you know, 9-11 was the iceberg that has sunk America. It's never coming back. But, you know, some of these other countries are still valuable. Like India's got a worthwhile culture. You know, we should try to save it. Yeah, but it's a continuation. It doesn't matter if it's Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, George H.W. Bush, George W. Bush, Bill Clinton, whoever it is. If it were Al Gore, if it were, uh, I don't know, Sarah Palin, they still would have been doing this because it is Monsanto who executes retaliation against Europe for rejecting their seeds. Yeah, it's right. not Hillary Clinton, it's Monsanto. Well, 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 Hillary Clinton, of course, says, you know, the reason I bring her up is I remember famously she was like, oh, we don't want Blackwater, the mercenaries on the American payroll who commit, you know, like, extraordinary rendition and assassinations overseas on behalf of our corporate clients. We don't want them anymore. And then when she's Secretary of State, of course, she's got them right there. And that's what they call, like, Monsanto, of course, it turns out that Blackwater and Z, and of course, they're being sold and turned over. They're on the payroll of these corporations. <laughs> yes, corporations on Monsanto. Can, can, yeah. They're on the payroll of Monsanto. They can call Call up uh, Z or Blackwater, whoever the mercenary du jour is, and say, hey, hey, killers over there, are you working for us extra legally outside of all the rule of law? Go assassinate these people who aren't being force fed. Monsanto seeds like ducks on a foie gras farm. Just kill them. Just kill them. We don't care. We have no rule of law. <laughs> I mean, America's become an assassination crazed, you know, big, porky, Monsanto fed crackhead country of slopping pigs, nightmares. <laughs> no. Okay. Wait, 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 uh, there's plenty of adjectives. Fill in your own adjectives. It should be just fill in your own adjectives. I mean, I mean, the thought of losing India, though, to Monsanto crack seeds is disturbing. I mean, this is a 5,000, 10,000, 15,000 year old culture. We're going to lose it for some freaking Monsanto seeds. Well, so Americans, are, something like over 90% of Americans are eating on a daily basis genetically modified food stuff. They don't know what, that it is genetically modified, but they're still eating it. And the studies are showing, on, at least on these other mammals, that it's causing health problems. Well, this takes us to the next headline, the big 5-0. 50 million Americans are now uninsured. That's the number of Americans lacking medical coverage now exceeds the population of Spain. This is one-fifth of non-elderly Americans are uninsured. Well, this is the equivalent of the final solution. In Nazi Germany, they creamed them and put them in crematoriums and burnt them. America, they're just going to cut them off from the health supply and all kinds of uh, excommunicate them from the digital money supply. And they'll die in the street. This is America's version of the final solution. Thanks, Obama, you freaking Nazi. It's the American population itself, because I witness with my own eyes massive anger against even the notion that we should ever extend health care to those 20 percent of Americans, non-elderly Americans, that have no health insurance. There was huge anger, like murder those people. We saw images of people being kicked on the ground who were paraplegic and said, go, you know, here's a dollar, go, go, get out of my face. So you could say all you want, you could attack Obama all you want, but he is just a man in head of a nation who are themselves rejecting these 20% of the population. So that takes me to this next headline. 
the U.S. government can't account for billions spent in Afghanistan. So while those Americans were there kicking their paraplegic neighbor on the ground, their U.S. government is apparently, they've lost $55 billion spent allegedly on balance sheet, by the way, so you know, with $55 billion spent and lost in Afghanistan to rebuild the country. Any protest about that? Any military industrial contractors down in Virginia being kicked on the ground while they're, you know, like laughing it up in bowls of champagne? Yeah, well, what's amazing, it doesn't make any sense because, of course, you don't give your neighbor health care, so there's no way to contain, let's say, a virus. So you don't have the virus. Your neighbor or someone in your community or someone within a 500-mile radius gets a virus. Because there's no money in health care, you get the virus. You're putting your own health at risk by not ensuring health for the rest of the community. It's like not having a fire department, which incidentally, America's cutting fire departments from municipalities all over <laughs> yeah, the world too. It. Meanwhile, the money is going to mercenaries in Afghanistan who are breeding terrorists and training terrorists to attack Americans on airplanes. So, you, so you're, you're using the money that you would have used to protect yourself on the health and you're giving it to terrorists to attack you in the air. You're freaking out of your minds. But hey, if it weren't for you idiots, we wouldn't be having fun doing this show. You know, it's not just Americans who are insane. Here's a headline from the holiday period of the end of last year. Britain begins five billion pound sales spending frenzy. Now, the interesting thing about this spending frenzy that we witnessed in the UK is the fact that the reason why people are racking up even more debt on their credit cards, and it's because the VAT is increasing, the value added tax is increasing from 17 and a half percent to 20%. So they're trying to save that 2.5% increase in cost. but By racking up another 20% of interest on a debit card. At, at least. Who so knows? Some credit cards, these are store credit cards as well, and they're charging up to 30 35%. Right, but it makes sense. I mean, Ben Bernanke <laughs> has the same idea, doesn't he? Quantitative easing <laughs> yeah. is he's floating a few trillion dollars in bonds for to save 2.5% on interest. In the meantime, loading onto the economy trillions of dollars worth of extra liability. Of course, Mervyn King over there at the Bank of England is just as foolhardy as Ben Bernanke. And, you know, their idea of economics is one where having people consume themselves to death is beneficial to the economy as a whole. Mervyn King, what, what's wrong with you? What, what, you and Ben Bernanke should get out of the hot tub and go back to school and learn a few things. So, Stacey Herbert, thanks so much once again for being on The Kaiser Report. Thank you, Max. All righty, when I come back, I'll be talking to James Howard Kunstler about this stuff and much more, so don't go away. Stay there.